because she was warned that there would be market turmoil. And effectively, her attitude was, I don't care. Um, there will be some turbulence to start with. Um, you know, live with it. Shall we start with what I feel is quite a, quite a revelation, actually, from Liz Truss in the last few minutes. She did not discuss scrapping the top tax rate with her cabinet. And she says it was a decision the Chancellor made. What do you make of that? Uh, well... I mean, this has gone down like a bucket of cold sick with the party, with the markets and the polls suggest with the public. And and if you go through what they did in that budget, every single measure um, was is popular with the public as a net approval rating, with the exception of two. One is putting up, uh, uh, one was scrapping the top rate of tax, the 45p rate, and the other one was um, scrapping the, ban on, uh, the cap on bankers' bonuses. So it looks a little bit like Liz Trust saying... Uh, it was the Chancellor what done it, Gov, not me. Um, I mean, she's admitted that they didn't lay the groundwork very well. It's clear that they didn't, either with their MPs or with the markets. Um, the markets don't like surprise, and um, what they got was a great big surprise. And the politics of this are very strange, because we're now told the government's going to be cutting um, something like uh, £40 billion pounds from uh, uh, public spending, a lot of which will go off welfare, and some of that is going to be spent um, at giving a tax break to millionaires, which is a slightly curious uh, state of affairs. Um, and, um, you know, there's a blame game running, and uh, it's pretty clear that um, uh, it's the Prime Minister putting the Chancellor on the hot seat, because um, mm. the only other person who can sit on that hot seat is her. Um, uh, so there we go. <laughs> Interesting. It is, it is quite star in, in terms of a political manoeuvre, it's, it's startling for any number of reasons. I wonder, Tim, if it does anything to calm, uh, first of all, any concerns within the Conservative Party who are all gathering in Birmingham for conference. Does that sort of finger-pointing from the Prime Minister, does that help? Does that go down well? Um, I suspect people will think that, you know, she ought to own these major decisions herself. Um, they'll be encouraged that she's at least acknowledging some error in how that this has all gone about and the sort of procedures of it, the order in which it was announced, the fact that, it, that the pitch wasn't rolled properly. Um, but I think a lot of her MPs are not just worried about the communications and the, and the sequencing. I think they're worried about the policy. Um, and I think um, while a lot of those people who are objecting to it won't actually be at the Conservative Party conference, they're staying away. Um, you know, her problems over the, the, the coming weeks are going to be that um, she, you know, is going to find... Uh, on several of these measures, including that um, abolition of the top rate of tax, um, it's not clear she has a parliamentary majority to, to get those things through. Yeah, that's really interesting, actually. And this kind of adds then to um, uh, what you've been reporting in the Sunday Times this morning around Quasi Quarteng, the Chancellor, and the party that he attended with financiers who, I mean, there's a real, real prospect, a real chance here that, that those financiers whom he met have really won big as a result of the announcements made in the budget last week? Yeah, I mean, look, they're, they're, he met a lot of people. Um, some of them were hedge fund managers. Um, and some of those hedge fund managers were, were shorting the pound. Um, one of them told us privately that uh, he continued shorting the pound until Monday when he closed his position. Um, well, what happened before that Monday was that Quasi Quartem went out last weekend on the Sunday and declared that, you know, uh, long after the, the pound had crashed on the Friday, that, um, uh, you know, there would be more coming, more of the same, more tax cuts. Um, he kind of doubled down. And what we're told happened at that party was that a lot of people said, well, well done, Charles. This is a great budget. You, you mustn't back off whatever you do. Double down, double down, double down. And that's what it, precisely what he did. Now, to be fair to Kwarteng and his team, they say his decisions were not affected by this. He believes this stuff. He... Uh, was always going to uh, pursue further tax cuts. And indeed, in the statement he made on the Friday in the budget, he said there was a big review of taxation, you know, which uh, the implications of which are that it was obviously going to lead to some more tax cuts. Mm. But uh, for those people, um, you know, concerned that um, uh, some people have made a vast sum of money out of the collapse in the currency, um, uh, this does very little to allay uh, fears that uh, sometimes uh, politics and, and finance is a little bit too close. And that's, that's an interesting one as well, because also in Liz Truss's interview this morning, she says there's too much focus in politics on the optics. But, but I, I, you know, it sort of very basic point to make. So much of politics is about perception. It's about how things land. She acknowledged mistakes in the, in the, the way the budget is sort of the groundwork was done for that. And so actually, is, is there any justification for her saying that, that too much focus is on the optics when you consider things like this, this uh, cocktail reception? 
Well, look, um, Liz Truss, in many ways, is an admirable character. She's quite a ballsy politician. She likes to do things differently. And I think, you know, she has legitimate grounds for saying that some of um, uh, the policy obsessions in this country uh, have not done this country any favours. But for a politician to start talking about being too much focused on the optics, I mean... (laughs) It's an absolutely absurd statement, to be perfectly honest. It's like a politician saying that too much focus in politics on the politics. Politics is perception. It is about um, not just coming up with a policy, but about persuading people that it's the right one, at selling it to uh, the public and the voters via the media. Uh, and Liz Truss actually has been rather adept at that. That's one of the reasons why she got the job, because she spent a lot of time giving interviews to the media, um, uh, spelling out her positions and being mildly uh, disobliging to the prime ministers that she served. So for her to say that there's too much focus on the optics is one of the most absurd statements I think I've ever heard as a journalist. Um, and, you know, the fact that her team haven't done very well at that... Um, uh, suggests to me that they ought to spend more time thinking about it, not less. Mm, that's a really interesting point, actually. Yes, OK, I, t- I see what you mean. Uh, just a final one then, uh, Tim. As, as Conservative Party conference gets underway, I noted this from Ed Conway, who's been writing in the Times, the Sunday Times rather, today as well, arguing that the markets aren't all taking fright at, at the individual elements necessarily of the trust plan, but they've taken fright at her, her attitudes and her all-round approach, which is a really difficult problem for the Conservative Party to engage with during conference over the next few days? I think that's right. Markets need to sort of trust that they understand where politicians are coming from. So when George Osborne outlined um, plans to make cuts, um, but didn't spell out specifically where they were going to fall, the markets got where he was coming from, trusted him to do it. And in due course, he did. Um, And they didn't take fright when he made announcements like that in his budgets. Um, And uh, Quasi Quateng now needs to persuade the markets that he has a long term plan to get public spending and under control and the, and the uh, the deficit you know back under control. What he announced in his budget was um, seventy two billion pounds of extra borrowing and forty five billion pounds of tax cuts. What he didn't do was outline any kind of medium term path um, towards um, some kind of fiscal credibility. Um, And unfortunately, because he did that and because Liz Truss goes around speaking in a very gung-ho fashion about what she's going to do and why she wants to do it. And as we report in the Sunday Times today, she was warned that there would be market turmoil. And effectively, her attitude was, I don't care. Um, There will be some turbulence to start with. Um, You know, live with it. But unfortunately, when they deliberately cut out the Office of Budget Responsibility, which normally marks the homework of governments and says, what does this all mean? They deliberately cut them out of this budget process. They left it to the markets to decide and the markets do not trust them yet. And they think that, frankly, they're a bit out there. Um, And while um, a lot of people in the city would uh, appreciate uh, her push for growth and the desire to deregulate and have fewer rules and give entrepreneurs and businesses the opportunity to innovate and make money and create jobs and everybody prospers as a consequence. There's something in that. But the Mm -hmm. politics, the handling, and frankly, yes, the optics of all of this have been so catastrophically handled that they've lost um, the ability to make that economic argument. Um, And the markets are looking for signs that they are taking this seriously. And that will mean probably more cuts than they would have had to make, um, but which will be politically damaging. It probably means that they might have to rethink some of these uh, tax cuts. They showed no sign of doing so at the moment. But as I say, the House of Commons might force that on them. Um, And what could have been, you know, an interesting total package um, was rolled out in such a way that um, they've almost lost the argument before they've begun to make it. And and the only people who are at fault for that are the Prime Minister and the Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, And to hear her suggesting it's all the media's fault is is quite extraordinary. Um, uh, I think it was Enoch Powell who said a, a... politician complaining about the press is like a sailor complaining about the sea the two go so completely together a politician can't do their job without um, optics and uh, explain themselves via the media Um, and they ought to be looking to themselves this morning rather than blaming everybody else 